What's up and welcome to the All Media Channel. Today we're discussing the new devastatingly brilliant Netflix documentary Harley and Katia which left some viewers in tears and others yearning for more information. On one hand the documentary is proving a huge hit with viewers, with many praising its unflinching honesty and sensitive handling of a heartbreaking tale. Whilst on the other hand critics and many others raise issues with Netflix seemingly skimming over the Olympic skater's addiction issues and most importantly the manner of her death. In the documentary, Alexandrovskaya's alcohol addiction is briefly mentioned. However, there is little to no mention whatsoever as to her actual cause or manner of death, and viewers are not informed that Katia's death was ruled a suicide. Instead, the documentary concludes with sport activists speaking and advocating for better health care and addiction services for Olympians and to change the age that skaters are allowed to professionally compete from 15 years old to the now 17 years old age requirement. The titular duo competed for Australia between 2015 and 2020, with the early years proving particularly fruitful, including bagging a gold at the Junior World Championships in 2017 which teed them up to compete at the 2018 Winter Olympics. But the pressure became unbearable, with injury troubles, health issues and coaching changes bringing a heartbreaking end to their glowing skating career together. Sadly. Due to the struggles Katia Alexandrovskaya faced off of the skating rink, such as health concerns, illness, and increasing alcohol abuse, the young Olympian medalist met an untimely death by suicide on July 18, 2020. Prior to her death, it was said Katia was battling depression which seriously impacted her health. In early 2020, Katia sought treatment for epilepsy, which prompted her to dissolve her partnership with Harley and bow out from figure skating just a month later. Katia left a note which simply read, I love, as police ruled her death as suicide. Her former skating mentor Belinda Noonan does not believe she killed herself. At the absolute bottom of my soul, do I think she purposely went out that window? No, I don't and I still don't, Ms. Noonan told the Australian. Do I think there could have been an episode? I think that could have been because she was diagnosed with epilepsy in January. I have those Russian medical reports. When Alexandrovskaya was living in Sydney she was struggling with her father's death, which led to her drinking heavily. She also struggled to make ends meet as her mother was unable to support her and she would often sleep on friends' couches following funding cuts to ice skating. She then got a job at Canterbury Ice Rink, where she helped with children's parties and was happy to make new friends. Ms. Noonan said each time they went out she would make sure to take Alexandrovskaya to the supermarket and buy groceries to ensure she was eating. When rumors began circulating that Alexandrovskaya was showing up to training hungover, Ms. Noonan immediately took her to a clinical psychologist. A few months later in January, she texted Ms. Noonan to let her know she wasn't going to training because she was feeling unwell. It was there she was diagnosed with epilepsy after being monitored for two weeks and was told she was not allowed to skate anymore. I don't want to stop skating she protested. It's not that bad. Friends said Alexandrovskaya fell into a deep depression after she was forced to quit the sport last year due to her diagnosis. Friends also said the Russian-born star found the coronavirus lockdown crushing at a time when she was also trying to forge a new life back in Russia. Leaving the sport at such a young age also devastated her finances, with one report on Russia's Channel 5 claimed she had been forced to work in a strip club to make ends meet. A female friend named Veronica said Alexandrovskaya had been depressed in the period leading to her death. The pair had recently spoken on the phone and Veronica said she got the impression Katia could not find herself. She felt lonely. I supported her as best I could. 
but due to circumstances I could not devote much time to her, which I regret now. I was due to meet her the other day. Veronica said that Alexandrovskaya had hoped to be able to return to the sporting world she loved. She wanted to return to big sport, but did not know how to do it, she said. Five years ago she suddenly lost her father Dmitri, and since hitting her own crisis had felt his absence more deeply, Veronica said. Alexandrovskaya former coach Andrei Kakalov said she hadn't trained since January 10. Then she had an attack. She was put in for an examination, it was before the championship of the four continents, said Kakalo. It was a very serious competition for Katia and Harley, where they had to perform well. Katia did not come to training because she suffered an epileptic seizure. Her mom was scared, it's good that she was at home. An ambulance was promptly called, and Katia was examined for two weeks. After that I went to see her doctor, who told me that it was epilepsy. The strong recommendation was that she should stop professional sports. I still tried to convince her to perform, but they convinced me that Katia should finish and take up another life, he said. She was urged to study and she was a smart girl I had no doubt that she would get into any university. It is unclear if Alexandrovskaya followed this advice, but it is known she tried to get a TV job in Moscow, and failed. She was in the care of psychologists, but treatment had not helped her. Kekalo also added that she previously struggled with sleepwalking. Katia had such cases so at first when I learned about her death, I thought this could be the reason. But the note she left of course, changes everything. I do not know what happened. I have known Katia since the age of four, but I do not understand why this happened. This news, of course, is crushing. I parted normally with her. It is said that she may have had depression. He said that he understood the desperation that could come with retiring from a sport before feeling necessarily ready to do so. Kekalo said Alexandrovskaya had known no other life than sport, so she had lost her moorings. She ceased to engage in an active life. She had daily training, jogging on Saturdays, competitions, and training camps. Imagine, she has all this from an early age. Then she was forced to finish, a decision she made with her mother on medical advice, this pandemic too. People tolerate it in different ways. The skater's former choreographer Andre Passion said, I think this was a suicide, not an accident. Investigative reports say she was in a state of alcoholic intoxication, I believe in this version more. All Katia's fans and the viewers know for sure is that it wasn't even five months after retiring that Katia's life would end, at her Moscow home at the age of just 20 years old, leaving behind a note in Russian that said, Lyublu, which translates to love. Rest in peace to Katia Alexandrovskaya, and prayers and condolences to her mother, her family, and friends. What did you all think about Netflix's Harley and Katia documentary? Was it too short? Should there be a part two? Should Netflix have told their viewers Katia's cause of death? Is Belinda Noonan alluding that Katia may have met a more sinister fate when she says that she doesn't believe Katia killed herself? Do you think that Olympic officials, the sponsors, the coaches, Andre, and even Harley could have done more to help Katia? Who do you think is most responsible for Katia's death? Let us know your thoughts and be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. Thank you for watching All Media.